Hello and welcome to Inside IT from the technology experts at Intel's own IT department. In this podcast, we get an update on Intel's data center strategy. Intel is a couple of years into its overhaul of its data center strategy. We've talked about that overhaul previously in this podcast series, but it's a good time to catch up on the process with a key player in the design and implementation of it. My name is Shesha Krishnapura. I'm a senior principal engineer in Intel IT. Krishnapura says the Intel data center transformation strategy is to run Intel data center service like a factory and apply breakthrough technologies, solutions, and process to stay relevant to Intel and achieve industry leadership. 63 Intel data centers with around 55,000 servers see to the needs of over 100,000 employees worldwide in the company's critical business areas, design, manufacturing, enterprise, and services. But that's not the only consideration for Intel IT. Intel servers power 94% of all data centers worldwide. And Krishnapura says the company has a leadership role to play in the industry. I think we should take Intel IT data center as a role model to be able to absorb these technologies, then solutions and develop the processes and able to get to the level of sophistication. And like any well-run factory, there needs to be a way of measuring the value of this transformation. Krishnapura cites three key metrics for measuring success. Meet growing customer demand within constrained spending targets, which is being cost competitive, while optimally increasing the infrastructure assets utilization, which is our IT efficiency. For Intel, the data center strategy needs to be aligned with the business. For example, design engineers run more than 45 million compute-intensive batch jobs every week. For the design vertical, Krishnapura says there are two different metrics, a throughput metric and a performance metric that need to be applied depending on the application performance demand of a particular project. And both are critical and they have different percentage points and you need to balance those to meet the design compute needs. And there's another metric for the design space. There are jobs which require less than 4 gig RAM. There are some jobs require between 4 to 12 gig RAM, and there are jobs which require in excess of 32 GB RAM. So what we call low memory, medium memory, large memory workloads. Manufacturing requires a dedicated data center for factories to be available 24-7. In the office and enterprise space, the focus is more about what Krishnapura calls the OS instance. That is the ability to provide that particular server voice instance to be able to get that computing done or to be able to host that a particular application on it for a long-term basis. Krishnapura points to design as an example of how effective the company's data center strategy has been since implementing it four years ago. During these four years, our cost of the EDA MIPS per unit cost has gone down 40% over four years. So at a relatively flat spending, we have met the growing demand of 239% over four years. And over these four years, we have cut the cost to 40%. And that's significant. And it's not just the particular business area that affects decision making. There are other factors to consider when developing metrics to measure success. You need to have the right metrics to be able to look at your past growth rates and also predict more meaningfully what the demand is going to be for the next three, four years. Because there are some investments which has a long lead time, for example, data center facilities. However, other than the facilities, the rest of the investments, when it comes to server storage and network, for example, they're relatively a very fast changing technologies which are happening year over year. And Krishnapura says it's important for IT to recognize they have a new competitor in the marketplace. Our competition is the cloud providers. The cloud providers have a large scale based infrastructure. Their cost structure of the massive scale of their infrastructure as a service for data center facilities, the server and storage, and then the network, they're way low compared to the cost structure of medium to large enterprise IT data centers because we cannot have that level of scale. All the more reason, says Krishnapura, to focus on those three barometers of success, best SLA, lowest cost, maximum possible utilization. And that's very critical for IT engineers to have that business mindset while not just technology or solution process mindset and having that linkage and able to take this data center transformation 
into a much more cohesive aspect of it. Krishnapura says in the four years since implementing Intel's data center strategy, the company has gotten $184 million in benefit. Out of that $184 million, 24% actually came from the Moore's Law, which is the Intel architecture benefits of every year, the new Intel architecture, investing in our servers with more cores, faster cores, we're able to get 24% of that benefit of $184 plus million dollars savings over four years in the design computing alone. The remainder of those savings that didn't come from Moore's Law came from IT innovations and efficiencies. And one of the innovation is our internally developed uh, patented idea called Numa Booster, which is specifically targeted to improve our performance of silicon design applications by an average of 17% performance improvement. And that was significant, and that got us in excess of $55 million benefit. Shesha Krishnapura says IT needs a deep understanding of the compute needs of various groups throughout the enterprise to ensure the success of its data center strategy. So the fundamental thing all IT folks need to ask a question is, am I relevant? How do I make myself as an IT professional relevant to my primary business? That does it for this edition of Inside IT. For more information on Intel's data center strategy or anything IT related, go to www.intel.com slash IT. While you're there, you can sign up for the Intel IT Center for regular updates on IT topics, third-party research, IT-focused events, and more. For Inside IT, I'm Paul Lancourt.